a very good afternoon to all of you. Shri C.P. Gurnani ji, Shri Bhimraya Maitre ji, Shri Siddharth ji and all the dignitaries present here. Ladies and gentlemen, at the outset I would like to thank uh, C.P. Gurnani ji for his kind words. But I must confess that uh, myself and our leader Sri Nitin Gadkari ji, we always wanted to make Nagpur a education hub. And that is why we thought that we should have iconic institution like Indian Institute of Management at Nagpur. But it is iconic because of you, Mr. Gurnani, the way you and Maitri ji have shaped this institution. I think that has made it great. So I would say that we have been just the facilitators and you were the people who were instrumental in bringing up this institution to today's repute. And when I look at the way it is progressing, I'm absolutely sure that it will be one of the premium institutions in our country. Now let me respond to what you have said about, uh, you know, one of the announcement which you read in Times of India. I didn't even read it in Times of India. I got to know it from you. <laughs> so let me tell you, if there is any plan from IIM Nagpur to establish a campus in Pune, I'll be very happy to give land. It will be a pride for the zero mile city of Nagpur to have the presence of its iconic institution in Pune, which is a sort of technology and education hub of India. So I would like to tell you that uh, whenever any such proposal from uh, the IIM Nagpur reaches me, I'll try and expedite it. Today, I'm very happy that this zero mile Sawad has been organized by IIM Nagpur. I think a Sawad like this is not only thought provoking, but it also paves a way towards our goals. When the business leaders, thought leaders, political leaders, all of them come together, express their views, put forth their ideas, I think that culminates into a bigger idea which takes you towards your goal. And today, we have aligned the central idea of Zero Mile Sawar with the goal given to us by our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji to make India a 5 trillion economy by 2030. I am absolutely sure that we are going to achieve the 5 trillion mark by 2030. In fact, few of the reports suggest that by 2030, India may not be 5 trillion, India can be 9 trillion. And uh, I think the strong leadership and also the youth, the human resource, 
of this country will surely make it possible friends i would say that this is the most opportune time for india in fact in 90s we started liberalization globalization we opened our doors for the world but for years together we were struggling we are not confident we are apprehensive what is going to happen what's going to happen to our own industries we also heard a talk that there will be one more east india company which will take over india from there we started progressing we could see indian industries indian businesses standing strongly in the global competition and in last 9 years we have seen that now there is no more struggle there is no more just aspiration but with a very strong resolve we can see a atmanirbhar india being built a self reliant india being built a india which was never so confident and it's not about just the confidence of india the global community is more confident that the brightest spot today is india and i think that is something which has changed in last 10 years the geopolitical situation has also given us opportunity to be at the forefront we have seen that for 30 years china was factory of world china manufactured for entire world china has been backbone of supply chain global supply chain but during the pandemic the global businesses have realized that we cannot put our all eggs in one basket with the policies of china where there is no guarantee of protection of intellectual property right today the entire world is looking for next manufacturing destination the world is looking for alternate supply chain and people used to say that it is far away now the businesses are shifting to vietnam to indonesia to philippines but these countries have a very small appetite when there is a exodus these countries are not capable of handling it today after a little shift we can see that there are a lot of energy problems labor problems shortage of human resource in many of these countries and now the world has realized that the only destination where we can actually locate ourselves and create a new icon for global supply chain is none but india and i think that gives us a very huge opportunity to become a global leader and that is why when we talk about 5 trillion economy i think today's topic which is given to me is very relevant whether maharashtra will be the gateway to 5 trillion economy and i would say 
Maharashtra has to and Maharashtra will be the gateway to fight Indian economy. When we look at Maharashtra, a state which contributes around 15% to national GDP with Mumbai as capital, which is financial, commercial and entertainment capital of India, Maharashtra accounts for 25% of Indian exports, 29% of FDI inflows, 18% of industrial output and barring the COVID years, our 7 year CAGR has been 10.4% and we have 57% population which is below 27 years of age. We have highest number of universities in the country and we also account for largest generation of and consumption of electricity in the entire country. I believe that if India has to become a fight in an economy, Maharashtra has to achieve a trillion dollar economy mark and we have already started our journey towards becoming a trillion dollar economy. And I think technology plays most important part in this journey. It's an important enabler. It's a force multiplier which provides immense scale and it's very crucial for such huge population so that there is always an equity and not just handful of people have the fruits of the development and I think this technology led development plan is one of the most important thing which will bring equity in our journey towards trillion dollar economy. We all know that technology by its existence and design is very inclusive. It doesn't recognize whether the person is Devendra Fadnavis or whether it is CP Gurnani or whether it is anybody else. Everybody is in a virtual queue, first in and first out. And I think when the governance recognizes that it has to be led by the technology, it brings a lot of transparency, it brings efficiency and that is why I think technology will be one of the biggest pillar to achieve the trillion dollar mark. I think the speed of travel and the speed of data are the two things which will determine our progress. Speed of travel, of course, the mobility is something which not only gives you quality life, but it also allows you to create a new supply chain. It also allows you to create a new ecosystem and the speed of data of course today when we are in an era of 5G the speed of data will allow us to democratize education and healthcare. It will allow us to reach the last man of the society. It will bring somebody who is residing in a metro city like Mumbai and somebody who is living in the last village of Garchiroli at same level 
and that's why i think the speed of data and the speed of travel are two things which will determine how we progress today we can see the way infrastructure is being built and especially in maharashtra i think world over we have seen a model of infrastructure led development you create infrastructure and it has a trickle down effect you create a infrastructure and it puts you on a autopilot mode and that's what we are trying to do and it's not just creating infrastructure creating proper infrastructure creating inclusive infrastructure creating infrastructure in proper time frame i must tell you that our nagpur mumbai samruddhi expressway which is very near to this indian institute of management nagpur is testimony that 700 kilometers green field road the entire land acquisition was done in 9 months and the road is created in 4 years it's one of the speediest creation in the country and look how it has changed the entire ecosystem in vidarbha and that is why i think we actually created a economic advisory council to chart a road map for making india uh, maharashtra a trillion dollar economy this economic advisory council is led by mr n chandrashekharan of tata sons and 20 strong ceos from india especially from maharashtra and also leaders from diverse fields they created a report after extensive deliberation after extensive field survey they created a report and this report was accepted by government of maharashtra and we created our own version of niti ayog which is mitra and now this mitra is in charge of implementing this report of the economic advisory council and this esc report deliberates on nine takeaways first is of course how to maintain our growth rate because between 15 to 20 our growth rate was nearly 12% but during covid years it became negative and now for trillion dollar economy we have again we want to take it to 12 to 14% and how do we do it are the ideas which are given by this economic advisory council one more challenge for the trillion dollar economy is the disparity now if you look at maharashtra out of our 36 districts seven districts contribute 55% of gdp and bottom 18% districts contribute less than 20% so although at the macro level we may say that economically maharashtra is a leader but when we look at the micro economic scenario there is a huge disparity but we can see it other way it's not just disparity it's also opportunity now these 18 districts 
if we focus and we accelerate their development will automatically hit the number which we require and we have always seen that to develop a potentially developed economy is very difficult but with proper ideas proper decisions and proper investment plans we can accelerate the aspiring economies and that will be our strategy so a balanced growth will be our strategy our focus now will be more on new age industry like ev semiconductor hardware manufacturing green hydrogen and i i forgot to respond to your thought about refinery and let me tell you uh, mr gurunani i'm totally ready to welcome a refinery in nagpur i am ready to give the land i am ready to provide everything the only problem is that the government of india has planned a coastal refinery and unfortunately i cannot bring sea and coast to nagpur that is my problem so coming back to the new age technology one more area which will lead us towards this trillion dollar economy is tourism maharashtra is blessed with four unesco sites 350 plus forts which are very historical chhatrapati shivaji maharaj is icon of india is icon of maharashtra these are not mere forts they are marvels of architecture there are marvels the way they are planned we have six national parks 50 wildlife sanctuaries this nagpur is not a mere zero mile city but it's also tiger capital of india the highest population of tigers is located in maharashtra and that too in vidarbha near nagpur we have 720 kilometers of coastline and nearly 15% of the indian tourists start their journey from mumbai so that gives us huge opportunity we also have four jyotirlings which is also very important for domestic tourism we have ajanta elora ajanta has always been a attraction for global tourists so our main growth can also come from tourism and at the same time i feel that we need to work more on sustainability in agriculture today what is pulling down what is bringing us down in our growth story is the effects of climate change on the agriculture a team from central government recently visited to look at the drought situation in maharashtra yesterday i interacted with them and they told me that in a same district we visited drought affected area unseasonal rain area hill storm area so all kind of calamities have been experienced and that is why climate resilient agriculture is something which is need of time we have started a program with world bank on climate resilient agriculture making 
our agriculture climate proof using technology in agriculture using good practices in agriculture and our also we are now focusing on using organic practices in agriculture and i think this is one area because in maharashtra agriculture contributes to around 35% or 40% of employment but the share of agriculture in our gdp is now less than 10% so the disparity is created that with the efforts of 35 to 40% workforce we are creating less than 10% of the gdp those people will always remain poor unless we put in technology unless we put in new ideas unless we make the agriculture climate resilient unless we provide them water security and that is why now in maharashtra we are specially working on providing water security to our farmers now for 5 trillion economy and 1 trillion economy of maharashtra we would also require will have lot of land and capital requirement so there are different ideas different tools through which we are trying to free up the land and make the land parcels available for investments and so far as capital requirements is concerned i think in today's world i have experienced that if you have a project which is bankable even for a project of government which is bankable today capital is not a problem i recently visited to japan and i showcased our iconic project of pvsl varsova virar ceiling which will be a ceiling of 42 kilometers and after looking at the way it is going to change the mobility in mumbai and mmr region they almost agreed to fund this pvsl and in my last tenure as chief minister i started projects worth 30 billion dollars in the state of maharashtra and i think there was a report from deutsche bank in 2019 which said that maharashtra accounts for 49% of the big infrastructure projects those are undertaken in the country so i think today for infrastructure for the projects which will accelerate your growth capital is required but i think if you have a proper approach if you have a proper governance i must tell you in mumbai for the first metro it took 11 years to create a 11 km metro and in 5 years i started 372 km of metro network out of which 50 km is already delivered by in 6 months will deliver 50 km more next year 50 km more so it's a approach in the governance the iconic projects like 
Trans Harbour Link, which is a 22 km sea bridge, planned in 70s, talk started in 90s, never happened. 2014, I took over, I went to the central government, I got all the approvals, and today, this 22 kilometers, which is the longest sea bridge ever built in India, is ready. And most probably in the month of January, our Honorable Prime Minister will inaugurate it. <laughs> the projects like New Mumbai Airport, the projects like the Coastal Road, which have been stuck for years together, it's only because of the new governance model, which Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji started and which was replicated in the state of Maharashtra that we could start such iconic projects. And again, for trillion dollar economy, we would require to enhance our power generating capacity by almost double, less than, little less than double. And I think we have started progressing towards that. But now, we are fortunate when one world is talking about energy transition. On one hand, we will start the energy transition, but on another, other hand, while we are developing, we can develop with the green energy. We don't have to go on the path of transition. And that's what we have started in Maharashtra. We are the first state to have green hydrogen policy. We have entered into MOUs of creating pump storage facility and an investment of 2 lakh crore is envisaged to create these facilities. And one more iconic project now for agriculture sector we are using 17,000 megawatt of electricity which is coal fired. We came up with a new solution in 2018. The feeders are separated. We said not big solar parks, but the feeder will be solarized. We did 1000 megawatt in 2018-19. It's running very well. And now in next three years, 16,000 megawatt of the agriculture feeder will be shifted on solar. 4,000 megawatt have already been tendered. In next six months, we are tendering 4,000 megawatt more. And that gives us one big advantage because today, the landed cost of our power for farmer is 7 rupees. And we charge the farmer 1 rupee 25 paise. So almost 5 rupees 75 paise is the subsidy. Half of the subsidy goes from our budget and half of the subsidy is loaded on industries. Today industries are also coming to us and saying, look, we are global players, energy cost is increasing. But when we are moving towards solarization, I think the cost is 2 rupees 90 paise, it's 3 rupees 10 paise, in some areas 2 rupees 70 paise. So around 4 rupees average, we are saving on every single unit. Around 13,000 crores of subsidy will be saved by this transition towards solar. And I'm very happy that now the government of India has instructed all other state governments to follow the Maharashtra model of solarization. I think I have already ran out of my time and I could see that uh, there is a small dialogue between MOC and the organizers. So I would conclude that yes, Maharashtra is going to lead the way 
because recently a survey was done by outlook and it has established that the startup capital is not bangalore it's not hyderabad the startup capital is maharashtra <laughs> the highest number of startups the highest number of unicorns are situated in the state of maharashtra and i must also tell you while i was chief minister for four consecutive years we were leading in fdi after that three years around two and a half years we were out of power one year karnatak became number one second year gujarat became number one but again after we came to power this year maharashtra is number one in fdi so with this renewed sense i am very sure that maharashtra is going to lead the way i would just like to conclude by what peter drucker once said the best way to predict the future is to create it so i would like to say join me let us work together to make india a 5 trillion economy and maharashtra a trillion dollar economy thank you jai hind jai maharashtra jai bharat